Welcome back. You're about to start working on your final project for this course. Before you begin, you'll need to learn a little bit about file IO or file input and output. This video will show you the basics of how to read from a file in a Python program. IO or input output is a general term in programming that refers to the flow of information into and out of a program. The input function allows you to retrieve input from the person running your program, and the print statement allows you to output information to their console. It is also possible to retrieve information from a file rather than from a user. Unlike with a user, with a file, we don't have to wait for anything to be typed. We can just read the lines of text that are already present. Let's say for the time being that we have a file called foods.txt. It contains four lines of text. The first line has different types of fruits, the second line has types of veggies, and so forth. If we want to read from this file, the first thing we need to do is create a file object and store it in a variable. We can use the open function to do this. The function takes a single argument, the name of the file as a string, and it returns a file object. In this example, we store the file object in the variable called file. Once we have the file variable, we can actually write a for loop over it as though it were a list. In this example, you can think of the variable file kind of like a list of strings, where each string is a line in the file. Watch what happens when we print each line in the file. Notice the blank line between each line of output in our console. This happens because each string that we retrieve from the file actually has an invisible character at the end that tells Python to go to the next line in the console. This character is called the new line character. The print statement adds a new line character to everything it prints. This is how everything you print appears on its own line. The result of all this is that every line in the file gets output with two new line characters at the end instead of one. You can always use the strip method to remove the trailing new line character from the string you read in from the file. This way, in each print statement, the only new line character will be the one that the print statement adds. If you're going to use the variable line later, it might be a good idea to just replace it with a version of itself that does not have a trailing new line. Once you've extracted a line of text from a file, you can treat it just like any other string. For example, you can append it to something. You can also use the split method to split it into words. This will definitely come in handy in this project. By using a combination of for loops, the strip method, and the split method, you can handle each word in a file individually. Let's take a look at the starter code for the first part of this project. It's a lot to take in all at once. So for now, I want you to focus just on this get counts function, which is where you're gonna be writing your code, and this part down here that calls it. So what's gonna happen is, you're going to read both text files, hamlet.txt and prideandprejudice.txt, and you're going to build a dictionary of word counts. Right now, I just want to demonstrate the mechanics of reading through these files. So I'll get rid of this, and as we saw on the slides, you can create a file object using the open function, and I'm just going to open file name. And in the first call to get counts, file name is going to correspond to the string hamlet.txt, and the second time it's going to correspond to prideandprejudice.txt. So I can just say open file name, and that will open whichever was passed as an argument. Then I can use this file object basically like a list of strings, where each string is a line in the file. And I can write a for loop over it like this for line in file print line. Now, I want to show you over here this file navigator that you can use to look at the files that you're going to be reading. So here's hamlet.txt for part one, and it's just the first 60 words of hamlet. And here is prideandprejudice.txt, and it's the first 60 words of Pride and Prejudice. So what we should see is this appear in our console. And just to differentiate between the two, I'm going to put a print between these two calls to get counts. It's just going to print five dashes. And let's see what this does. Okay, so what it did is it printed every line in each file and it printed a new line in between each line. So you have an extra blank line in between each line that gets output. And as we saw in the slides, the reason for that is that each of these strings that get stored in the file object contains a new line character at the end. And then the print statement appends another new line. So we have a line and then a new line and then another new line. We can get rid of that extra new line by saying print line dot strip, which is a method that returns a version of the string without leading or trailing white space. So now if we run this, we don't have extra blank lines. Now, if we're going to use the variable line again, it might be a good idea to just replace it with a version of itself that doesn't have the trailing white space. And now we can just say print line. And it does the same thing. 
Now we can also take the line and print it word by word. So instead of printing the line, I can say for word in line dot split. What that's gonna do is it's gonna create a list of strings by taking each line and splitting it on white space. So each of these space characters is gonna be what it splits on. And then I can print word. And instead of printing one line at a time from the file, this prints one word at a time. This is gonna be really useful to you in the project. Okay, hopefully this helps you get started on part one. Best of luck.